So, continuing on with our discussion of examples of temperature and heat topic, let's now have the following problem. How much heat must be absorbed by ice of mass 720 grams at negative 10 degrees Celsius to take it to the liquid state at 15 degrees Celsius? So here you have water that is initially at solid and you are to add heat to it to melt it into liquid water at a final temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. We have the following values. There's only one object, H2O, initially solid, ice, when it melts, it's still basically the same object. Therefore, there's only one mass M, 720 grams. The mass of the ice will still be 720 grams after it melts. We have specific heat of ice, specific heat of water, and heat of fusion of ice. As mentioned before, it is advisable that you memorize these values. As you can see, these values are not mentioned by the problem. Specific heat of ice is 2,220 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Specific heat of water is 4,187 joules per kilogram Kelvin. And specific and heat of fusion of ice rather is 333,000 joules per kilogram. Next, we have the initial temperature of the ice, negative 10 degrees Celsius. When we ha add heat to the ice, it will increase in temperature until it reaches the melting point. Temperature of water, 0 degrees Celsius. You have temperature T2. After the ice has melted, any heat that we add will increase the temperature of the melted ice, the temperature of the water, until it reaches the final temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. You have temperature T3. As mentioned before, it is good practice to convert your temperature values to Kelvin. The transition from the initial state to the final state may be divided into three parts. The first part, when you add heat to the ice, it is not yet at the melting point temperature, so the ice will only increase in temperature. It will increase in temperature until it reaches the melting point temperature. The heat involved for this part is Q1, Mc delta T. And we are able to calculate Q1 to be 15,984 joules. The next part, when you continue adding heat to the ice, it is already at the melting point temperature. The ice will melt. You have Q2, MLF. Positive because melting is heat gain if you will recall our discussion before. And we are able to calculate Q2 to be 239,760 joules. And then for the last part of the transition, the ice has already melted. If you continue to add heat to the melted ice, to the water, the water will increase in temperature until it reaches the final temperature. So from T2 to T3, you have Q3 MC delta T. And we are able to calculate Q3 to be 45,219.6 joules. The total heat needed therefore is Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. And we are thus able to calculate Q Total. Moving on to the next problem. You have a copper slab of length 15 centimeters. 
and the cross section area of 105 cm squared. One side has temperature TH is equal to 125 degrees Celsius and the other end has a temperature TC is equal to 10 degrees Celsius. Heat will then flow from higher temperature to colder temperature to lower temperature. So heat will flow from TH to TC. How much heat is conducted? through the slab in 30 seconds. Copper has a thermal conductivity of 401 watts per meter Kelvin. So now we have the following values. Let L be the length of the copper slab, 15 centimeters. Capital A be the cross-section area of the copper slab 105 centimeters squared and of course you have th and tc again it's always good idea to convert your temperature to kelvin scale time elapsed is 30 seconds and the thermal conductivity is given by 401 watts per meter kelvin so heat will flow from hot to cold and since this is a solid object, a copper slab, you have thermal conduction. H is equal to Ka TH minus Tc over L. The rate at which the heat flows from TH to Tc. And the general equation for H is total heat transferred Q divided by elapsed time so you have Q over T is equal to Ka TH minus Tc over L. Plotting in the values, you see that the only unknown quantity is capital Q, the total heat transferred. And you are able to calculate Q to be 2914.833 joules. And now we move on to the last example. Consider the figure shown. It is a figure of a wall cross section. It is the cross section is comprised of four layers: layer A, layer B, layer C, and layer D. And according to the problem, the thickness LD is twice the thickness of layer A, L, A. And the thermal conductivity of layer D is five times the thermal conductivity of layer A. KD is equal to 5 KA. The temperature at the surfaces of the layers, you have T1, T2, T3, T4, and T5. T1 is 25 degrees Celsius, T2 is 20 degrees Celsius, and T5 is negative 10 degrees Celsius. Determine the interface temperature T4. So we have T1, 25 degrees Celsius, T5, negative 10 degrees Celsius, the heat will flow from hot to cold from T1 to T5 as shown in the figure. We can also see from the figure that our materials which are solid, so this is thermal conduction, we see that the layers are arranged in series, one after another. As such, there is only one heat transfer rate through the whole object through the wall, H, overall heat transfer rate, is equal to HA, is equal to HB, is equal to HC, is equal to HD. Heat transfer rate in layer A is equal to heat transfer rate in layer B, and so on. Clearly, the problem is comparing layer A and layer D. So we have HA 
is equal to HD. HA is KA A T1 minus T2 over LA, whereas HD is KDA T4 minus T5 over LD. There's only one cross-section area A for this problem. Substituting the relationship between LD and LA as well as KD and KA as described by the problem. Again, LD is equal to 2LA, while KD is equal to 5KA. Simplifying, we see that the only unknown quantity left is temperature T4, which is what the problem is asking for. We are able to calculate T4 to be 265.15 Kelvin or negative 8.00 degrees Celsius. And that's it for our discussion of the examples. That's it for our discussion on the topic of temperature and heat. Thank you for watching.